Hello. I'd like to encourage you to join Jeremiah Smith and World Revives Church Network out of India for a special international Zoom meeting that will be held October 18th, 8 a.m. Central Time. And we encourage you to go to jeremiahsmithministries.podbean.com and you can click on the Live Services tab and you'll find the Zoom meeting link, the meeting ID, and passcode for this very special event. Thank you so much for joining us today and we hope you enjoy Jeremiah's next message. Welcome to Jeremiah Smith Ministries, a place where you can grow in God's Word. All right, well, we are live, praise the Lord, and going worldwide today. How you doing today? I hope things are going good for you. Hey, I'm Jeremiah Smith, and I'm here to teach you God's Word with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit today, and I believe that the Holy Spirit's going to minister to you today. Do you believe that? Do you believe that the Holy Spirit can minister to you right there where you're at today? I do. I believe that he can reach you right there where you're at. You may say, well, man, I, I'm in a place in the world. There's no possible way that he could get to me here, <laughs> you know. But, you know, he goes all around the world. You know, God's everywhere at one time, you know. And he's going to minister to you right there where you're at if you'll let him do that today. Do you believe that? I believe it. I believe he'll minister to you. Praise the Lord. Well, you can catch us live every Wednesday and every Sunday here. And uh, I am trying to make myself alive and available for you on Wednesdays. And sometimes sometimes we're a little bit late. I think we're just a few minutes late today. But we are here at uh, 4 p.m. on uh, Sundays, Central Time. And you can kind of figure that wherever you're at around the world. And, of course, on Wednesdays, about 6 p.m. Central Time. And uh, we try to be there for a few minutes late. Just stick in there. We will be there for you. And uh, we try to be here live for you every Wednesday and Sunday. You've been taking care of your spirit. Have you been feeding your spirit? You know, we're going to talk about that in this faith message about feeding your spirit. You know, that's one that I believe the biggest problems with faith ministers and people that believe God is that they don't feed their spirit. And uh, I know this because I've had challenges with it before. And it's important that you feed your spirit. It's a work. It's an everyday work. And we're going to get into that uh, during this series. I don't know that we'll get into it today. We might, but you need to make sure that you're feeding your spirit on a regular basis. You know, you feed your your face, you know, <laughs> every day. I fed my face before I even started. My, well, you know, fed my body right before I started here. You know, your face, you know, uh, you, we feed ourselves on a regular basis, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner. And, you know, people won't even feed their spirit what, once a week. Sometimes once a day, you know, but you got to feed your spirit on a regular basis or you get into places you don't want to be. You say, well, I'm depressed today. Well, you know, did you feed your spirit at all? You know, I'm down today. Well, did you feed your spirit? I don't mean just reading the word, you know, you have to ask the Holy Spirit to be your teacher as you read the word. You've got a relationship going on here. And, you know, you want to take a little time with him and say, hey, Holy Spirit, now should you teach me the word? You know, it's God breathed. It's life. It's not just any book. But, you know, you need to make sure that you're feeding your spirit, you know. And, then, of course, you want to listen to the ministry gifts that God's given to us, the fivefold ministry, you know, let the Holy Spirit speak to your spirit. We know that faith cometh by hearing. We've been talking about that in this series, you know, and accepting it's of truth. But you got to hear some things, you know. We got to hear some stuff, you know. He'll confirm some things in your spirit, keep you along that pathway with his rhema word, his, his life spoken word, his, his, you know, and he's still doing it today. He's talking to you right now. You know, he's his word will speak into your spirit. Just one word from the Father can change your whole circumstances, but we got to get around his word. We're supposed to be living by his word. Amen. Who is the word? That's Jesus, right? We know that from the first chapter of John, it talks about that in the beginning was the word. That's Jesus, right? And he became flesh, became Came Jesus, the Messiah, you know, and he is the word and he's speaking all the time to our spirits. And I believe he's going to speak to some of you today. You know, he's got a word for you. He wants you to come out of your circumstances. He wants you to reach for bigger things and bigger dreams and bigger goals with your life. But you got to take some time with him feeding your spirit. Praise the Lord. We're going to get more into that as we talk about faith. And I haven't even hardly got into this today. But, you know, as we get into talking about faith, you've got to feed your spirit, man. You know, you, you're going to wind up somewhere you don't want to. You know, if I'm dri driving my car, right? And if I don't put gas in my car, you know, what if I got stuck on a hill? <laughs> That's dangerous, isn't it? You know, right in the middle of traffic, stuck in a hill. I had this happen one time. I'll never forget. I was driving my car, and I thought the uh, they had, had four little dots on it there. And I thought, well, hey, man, that means I've got plenty of gas. You know what? Well, didn't read it right. 
and I ran out of gas and I was stuck on a hill. Thank goodness. I had a friend nearby came and helped me get it off, you know, uh, get it off the hill and over off the side. You know, we pushed the car over, you know, cause it misread and how much gas was in there. Have you been misreading how much you need to put in your spirit? Have you been misreading how much word content you have in your spirit? How much of the Holy ghost you've got filling your, your soul up and your, your spirit up, you know, are you spending time in his presence, filling yourself up? You know, are you misreading it? Sometimes you think, Oh, I'm just fine. Everything's going to be just fine. I'm, I'm going to make it over this hill. You know, well, you know, if you're regularly taking care of it and you're regularly taking care of your spirit, then you're going to get a whole lot further than where you need to go. He's going to make sure you get a whole lot further than uh, right where you're at, you know, but you have to take care of your spirit on a daily basis. Isn't that right? We have to take care of our spirits, praise the Lord, you know. And so we're going to talk more about that today as we get into the, the word today. But, you know, like I said, you can catch us live at 4 p.m., like I said, on on uh, Sundays and 6 p.m. Central Time on Sundays. Now, if you can't catch us at those times, don't get yourself upset. Don't get yourself sad. You know, <laughs> I'm getting with you there. Uh, you can listen to the rebroadcast, you know. And if you missed last Wednesday, you really missed out. We had um, Brother Michael Studeman with us, you know, and he was uh, in here as we got into the Word. He brought some great th- truths out. If you haven't listened to the uh, podcast from last week, check that podcast out with Michael Studeman. I played it on the live podcast there. Uh, you might check that out, though. He had some great words of knowledge and things that he had during that podcast and lots of great word. And so take some time and listen to that if you get the chance. And if he encourages you and ministers to you, give it to someone else. Check out his uh, podcast, stu- uh, my, or was it uh, podcast with Studi, Truth with Studi. Uh, check that out. You know, you can go over to uh, Jeremiah Smith Ministries.podbeam.com, hit the live services tab. And uh, you can go in there, and I have a link for his studio podcast if you'd like to listen to that on a regular basis. Now, I believe it's on Wednesdays. It comes out once a week, so you can check that out if you'd like to. But if you want to listen to the rebroadcast of my podcast, you can listen to them on Spotify, Google Music, iTunes, Listen Notes, Podbeam. Tune in off Alexia, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Deezer, Pandora, Amazon Music. Uh, you can listen to us on Verbal, iVox, Audio Junkie, Pod Chasers, Player FM, and Samsung. That's our newest one there. But you can listen to it on just about any platform uh, that you'd like to listen to it on there. So there's no reason to miss out. You can check out the rebroadcast. We put those out just as soon as possible uh, so they can be a blessing to you there. And, of course, we're live on YouTube. If you're out there on YouTube, how you doing out there? And uh, we're live on YouTube. You can check us out there on the uh, YouTube channel live right now if you want to. And, of course, we're live on Podbeam right now. That's our home. And uh, you can listen to us live on audio on Podbeam if you'd like to check that out. And all, most of our messages are on YouTube or Podbeam. We have nearly 200 messages messages, I believe, on YouTube and on Podbeam, nearly 300 uh, messages there. So you can check out the messages on Podbeam. Lots of content to go back and feed your spirit like we are talking about earlier. Take some time and feed your spirit on a regular basis, you know. You know, no one's going to do it but you right? You know, no one's going to take care of you, but you. And, and if you find out, Hey, I'm not looking so good in in certain areas of my life. Well, you know, you have to look at what you're putting in. What, what are you putting into your spirit? You know, it's easy to watch all kinds of programs. I'm one of those I have to watch and be careful about watching too much. You know, you can watch a whole drama for a whole season today, <laughs> you know, sit there and watch the whole thing, veg out, but not take time for your spirit. And, you know, we have to take time for our spirit. You know, well, why do I feel like this? How come I do? I feel this way. Well, did you feed your spirit? You know, you've got to take care of it stronger. Uh, then you, you're feeding your flesh. You have to make sure you're feeding your spirit regularly, praise the Lord. And like I said, that's not just getting up, doing your confessions and reading your Bible. you got to hear some things and let the Word of God minister to your spirit, praise the Lord. And there's so much to listen to out there, ministers, uh, so many different free messages to listen to. Uh, mine, you're, they're free, available to you. But make sure you're listening to things that build you up and encourage you. Don't listen to that stuff that that tears you down. But listen to stuff that builds you up and encourages you so you can get into that destiny and fulfill the purpose God has for your life. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if, you, if you'd if you like to give, you can give as well. Go to Patreon to give if you like to. Jeremiah Smith Ministries there. You can give there if you like to. Luke, Luke 638 says, Give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, run it over. Shall men give unto your bosom? As soon as I said that, I just felt like my spirit or somebody said, Oh, my goodness, now he's asking for the money. Well, no, all of our stuff is free. 
where we make everything freely available to you. But I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't give you the opportunity to give because God wants to get something into your life. He wants to bless you back, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. That's why I, I like to give you that opportunity to give. We, we're all of our stuff's free. Everything's taken care of, but we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to give if you'd like to give. So give if you'd like to go to Patreon to do that, or go to Jeremiah Smith Ministries and hit the giving tab if you'd like to. But remember, everything's free. There's no pressure to give here. And uh, that's just if you'd like to give, praise the Lord. You know, I, I like to buy music CDs, Christian music CDs, and I get blessed by them. And they're free. You know, I listen to a streaming service. So I get those free, you know, pretty much after paying the cost every month, you know. But I like to buy the CD, you know, because I want to support that person on what they do, you know, and, and it helps them, you know, because they're not getting the avenues of money that they used to get, you know, with the music, you know, but it, it, it it's, I, I want to be a blessing to them. I want to reach out and encourage them by buying their material and helping. I, I try to make the concert if I can, you know, because I want to encourage them to fulfill their ministry, you know, and so, and it, and it blesses them and encourages them. So I just like to give you the opportunity if you'd like to, to give if you'd like to. So, and Galatians 6, 7 says it like this. It says, do not be deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So whatever you sow, if it's money, if it's love, if it's being a friend, spending time with God, you're going to reap it back good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, running over in your life. You know, even with God and his presence, you know, you have to spend time with him if you want more of him in your life. You know, the Bible says, draw nine to me and I'll draw nine to you. If you give, it'll be given back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Everything's been paid for, but we have to step forward and give the things that we need to give and spend the time reaching out to God like we need to give to get more of those things into our lives. So make sure that you're stepping out to do that, praise the Lord. Amen. And to that person that said, well, why do you mention finances? Well, you know, whether you're thinking that today, uh, I would have to ask you, you know, you don't want to be selfish, right? You know, well, I don't need more money. Well, if you have more money, you can be more of a blessing to someone else, right? That's selfish if you don't want to be a blessing to someone else. I have plenty. Well, you may have plenty, but, you know, wouldn't it be greater to have more so you can be a blessing to someone else, right? You know, that's what we need to be is vessels to be a blessing to someone else. And God wants you to be a blessing to someone else. We can be that good Samaritan to someone else if we have more. And so we want to make sure that we're giving on a good measure, or pressed down, shaking together, sowing into God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to go ahead and get into our message. Grab your Bible, get your tablet, get your phone. I don't know. This is the best part, right? We get to listen to God's word. Here's my Bible. <laughs> All right. Got my phone here. Get your tablet, get your, get what you need as we get into the uh, word today. We will be talking, like I said, about faith today. And I hope that you're, oh, I got to mention this too. Uh, before I go any further there. Let's see if I can pull this up on the website real quick. Let's see here. We have an upcoming uh, meeting on this Tuesday. If you'd like to catch that meeting, if I can get my get the internet up here. Let's see here. I'm actually going to go right over to jeremiasmithministries.com, podbeam.com. It's not podbeam.com if you'd like to go there. Uh, but uh, if you go on over there and you hit the live services uh, tab, I believe. I'm checking that right now here. I said, Jeremiah, hurry up. I'm waiting on the computer. <laughs> but uh, if you go to this, let's see here, and you go, you scroll down, there's kind of a white box there. And right below that is where you can join the meeting on Tuesday if you want to join it. Now, this is the central time for that. I know we have listeners all around the world, so you want to figure the time that, that it is for you there. But if you'd like to attend that meeting there, and it's uh, it's going to be a meeting of the World Revives Church Network. Uh, let's see what the pastor there, Chabria M. Uh, Terrachat, I believe I, I pronounced that correct there. Excuse me, Pastor, if I didn't pronounce it right there. Uh, but uh, it'll be for India. It'll be an India meeting. And so you're welcome to check that if, out if you'd like to. It will be at uh, 8 a.m. here Central Time. If you're in India, it'll be 7 p.m. if you'd like to catch that meeting. And uh, like I said, it's going to be for the uh, World Revives Church Network there. So you're welcome to check that out live. Uh, we have the Zoom link. We have the meeting code and everything 
uh, there uh, on the website there at uh, jeremiasmithministries.podbean.com. Just hit the uh, the live services tab if you'd like to attend that meeting. So I encourage you to check that out. I think it'll be a blessing to you. Last time we had one, it was a great meeting there. I will be there November 1st. If you miss it for some reason, I'll be coming back on November 1st is what he's telling me. And so we'll plan that one too. If you'd like to attend that meeting, I'll try to let you know as the meetings come up here, Uh, but uh, you can check that out uh, this Tuesday. It's going to be Tuesday. Uh, So what was the date on that? Let's make sure we got the date right here. So just in case you're listening, you haven't heard this in a while or you're listening to this in an old podcast, if, if it's been archived, October 18th, 20, 2022. So that's when it's going to be this Tuesday. So you can check that out if you'd like to. Love to see you there. That'll be wonderful. We're going to have just a good time. The Lord, they love God there so much. It's going to be a blessing. And so you can spend time with us and join in. And I believe the Lord's going to minister to us there. So it's going to be wonderful. So grab your phone, get your tablet. We're going to pray real quick before we get into the message here. And we'll be talking about faith. This is part eight. And uh, let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you, Father, for your mercy today. You've been so good to us, Father. Your mercy has been so good to us. And Father, we just thank you for being so good to us on a daily basis, Father. Taking care of our families take care of us. We just minister to you, Father. Thank you for being so wonderful, Father, in our lives. And Father, we ask, Father, that you, that you that you minister to us today through your word today, Father. Thank you for taking care of us and our future. Uh, Father, we thank you, Father, for anything that's coming up that you see that's coming up. We think it's provided for everything, Father. You see it before it comes, and you're a good Father to help us have those needs met. If there's someone with a need right now, Father, physical need, Father, we agree right now in Jesus' name that that need be met, Father. Whatever it is, Father, Lord, if it's a light bill or a gas bill, Father, whatever that need is, Father, we ask for that need to be met right now in Jesus' name. We just agree with that one listening. And, Father, there's another one that's needing healing. Father, we just ask for total and complete healing for that person, Father. The Bible says we agree concerning anything that we shall ask, it'll be done. And we agree for healing for that one right now in Jesus' name. I see somebody with some kind of cut there. It's kind of a, a just like a rip kind of cut. You may know who I'm talking to today. And Father, we just agree for that total healing for that today. I don't know if it happened right before this podcast, but we ask for total healing for that in Jesus' name. And we give you all the praise, Father, for it. However deep it is, whatever's happened with it, we thank you for total healing of that in Jesus' name. And we give you all the praise if it's a healing for us, a a hurt or a wound spiritually, Father. We agree for that too in Jesus' name, for total and complete healing for that. And we just thank you, Father, for it in advance in Jesus' name. And as we get into the word, we thank you, Father, your Holy Spirit's our teacher. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to teach us today. We ask that you help us to get across everything you want us to get across today by your your spirit today, Father. And Father, we ask that you help every person listening to get every spiritual need met today, Father. Whatever it is they're needing and they came here to hear, we ask that you help them to get that need met, Father. As I speak, they may even get something totally different by your anointing today, Father. Help them to get what they need, Father. We ask for every burden to be removed and every yoke to be destroyed. Flood us with light today, Father, and help everyone listening to get what they need. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, hey, we're going to get into the Word. We're going to start with our opening scriptures here in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We've been using these pretty regularly on uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. (coughs) Excuse me. And uh, we're going to start right there in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. You can't get too much of this. This is about faith. Faith affects you every way, (laughs) right? I mean, you have to have faith for everything in the Bible. You have to have faith that the Bible is for you, right? So faith's important in every area. So we can't get too much of these scriptures. So let's look again at this. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. What does that tell you? That tells you all the stuff going on around you has nothing to do with what the word says, right? It doesn't matter what the circumstances, and and, and you'll find out most of the time, the word is totally different than what you see around you, (laughs) right? Most of the time, because, you know, it contradicts what the world's saying to your life. It contradicts what's going on in your life. You know, maybe today you're sick and ill and the word says you're healed. Well, which way are you going to go? 
Are you going to agree with the word today? Or are you going to agree with what, what you're seeing with your eyes today, right? You might say, well, I, the world has told you all your life that you're never going to amount to nothing, but the Bible says that you're, you know, that you're precious unto him and God, Jesus paid a price for you and you're special unto him. And, you know, what is he creating? He creating his own image, you know. What are you going to agree with? Are you going to agree with the world? Or are you going to agree with what God's word says about you today? Praise the Lord. Amen. You may say, well, I feel like I'm just a horrible, horrible wretched sinner. But the Bible says you're the righteousness in Christ Jesus. Which one are you going to agree with today? Are you going to believe that you're the righteousness in Christ Jesus? Or are you going to believe what the world says about you today, right? You say, well, I'm in a circumstance that's never going to be able to get fixed. Well, you know, the Bible says we always triumph through Christ Jesus. Which one are you going to agree with today? Are you going to agree with God or are you going to agree with what the circumstances say today? Well, we have to make a choice, right? Before we start on this walk of faith, we got to make a choice. We're going to agree with the word no matter what it says in our lives. And it's important that we do that. You know, maybe today you, you have a marriage that has all kinds of challenges, you know, but God talks about, you know, all the good things he can do to make your life better, you know, and he can make your marriage better, make everything better for you. What are you going to agree for today? What are you going to agree with? You're going to agree with the word? Are you going to agree with your circumstances today? Maybe you have a job that you hate terribly every time you get up. What are you going to believe for? God can get you a better job. Or are you going to believe that your job, you have to stay in that particular, particular situation? You know, we have to make a choice what we're going to believe for. And we can either agree with what God says about things, or we can agree with what the world says about things. The world likes to restrict you. They like to put you in a box, make you feel like you can't accomplish anything. But God's word, it's unlimited possibilities for your life, right? And sometimes we got to renew ourselves to that and make ourselves remember, like we were talking about earlier, about what the word says about our circumstances. What does it say about your circumstances? What does it say about you today, right? Well, the word's either right <laughs> or the world's right. Which one do you believe? I believe the Bible's right. I believe we need to stick with the Bible. We need to make sure we're snuggling close to the word, right? Keeping ourselves close to holding on to the rock of God's word. And it's important that we do that on a daily basis. So we we're, we're supposed to walk by faith and not by sight, right? So this, it says you're not going to, if you're going to walk by sight, it has nothing to do with your feelings, right? It has nothing to do with how you feel if you're sick today. And, and though that doesn't determine your faith and what God's going to do in your life it has nothing to do with what you see today. Right. But it's important that we go by his word. I, I don't care what the situation is and what you're dealing with. You know, you have to go with the word. And maybe some things will take a little bit longer to walk out with you by faith. But we go by his word. Faith is what causes things to happen in our lives. Praise the Lord. You, know, you may not hear a whole lot of this type of teaching today. You know, you, there's a lot of people who want to motivate you and they want to encourage you. But, you know, it's important that we, t we talk about the word when we're talking about motivating and teaching. You know, some people just use one scripture, not putting them down. But, you know, we need lots of scripture. We need lots of word. We need to build our spirits up. And, you know, he, he wants us to walk by our faith. And if you're going to walk by your faith, you've got to have lots of scriptures. He said out of the mouth of three or more witnesses. So you need at least to have three scriptures. <laughs> Amen. You need to make sure you got plenty that you're injecting into your veins and learning and getting the beliefs within you that you need to have in your life. And the Holy Spirit's going to quicken you what's good and what's not, you know. It's interesting, you know, we got people with all kinds of beliefs today. You know, they, they believe all kinds of things, they, you know, certain things. Some people believe there's only there's all kinds of ways to heaven. But, you know, there's not all kinds of ways to heaven. There's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ, right? So we, we need to know what we believe. We need to be knowing what the Holy Spirit says. And he's saying by his word that there's only one way, right, through Jesus Christ, you know. And there's people with all kinds of different uh, beliefs and different things. But the Holy Spirit's not all different. He's not in all different directions. He's trying to bring us in unity. Paul said of one heart and one mind. So and when these things are coming from people. They're not coming from the Holy Spirit who's trying to draw us all together with the same beliefs in his word, right? And we go just by the word. If it's not in there, then we shouldn't believe it. You shouldn't believe it if I'm telling you if it's not in there. You need to be looking in there for it and going by what it says in the word. We walk by the word by faith. Amen. So we're supposed to walk by faith, right? And we're supposed to live by faith. Hebrews 10, 38 says, now the just, who's the just? <laughs> we're justified. Who's the righteous? That's us, right? 
Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Who's the just today? Are you walking by faith? Are you living by faith today? We're supposed to live our lives every day of faith, you know? You know, is that, well, you say, well, is that believing God for big things every day? No, faith has to do with your love walk today. Are you, are you living in love, walking in love, being a blessing to people? If you know that you're supposed to walk in love and that's your belief, that's what you have faith in. You need to be, be a loving person on a daily basis, right? You know, and if he says certain things in his word, those are the things that we're to have faith in and walk in on a daily basis is what we're supposed to do, right? So we're supposed to live our lives by faith, our whole lives, every day, every day we get up. You know, and if that means that you know that the Holy Spirit wants to talk to you, get up in the morning, be expecting what the Holy Spirit's going to say to you today. Amen. Get up. If you believe he's going to, he's alive and he's not dead, you get up in the morning, you, you look for him to be alive and not dead in your life on a daily basis. You have to get up, be looking for him on a daily basis. You know, we don't serve a dead God. You know, he's alive. His word's alive, right? And you have to be looking for him on a daily basis if you want him to speak to you, right? He's not going to force anything on you. You have to be going after it, right? And he said, draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you. You have to go after him, <laughs> amen. Pursue him, you know. I don't, you know, my wife, I had to go pursue her. I wanted to go after her. If I wanted to be getting married to her, if I want to date her, I got to pursue her, right? Well, you know, she's not going to force herself to be with me, you know, and your friends, they're not going to force themselves to be your friends. You have to go after them. Praise the Lord. And, and God doesn't force himself on anybody. And we have to go after him and pursue him on a daily basis. What, what caused you not to pursue him like you used to? Some people are saved right now. Listen to my voice and they're not pursuing him like they used to. What caused you not to pursue him like you used to? You know, do you still have that passion that you should have on the inside? Are you still thrilled with the word like you should be? If you're not thrilled with the word, you need to get thrilled with the word again in your life. Amen. Get thrilled with the word. The word should quicken your mortal soul. It should quicken your body if you're getting into the word. Amen. It shouldn't be some dry thing. You just get to two, two little scriptures a day. No, you need to get in there and fellowship with his word, man. His word will quicken your soul and your body if you'll spend time fellowshipping with him and through his word, right? His word's not changed. It's never changed. It's the same word that got you saved and you were thrilled when you got saved, right? It's the same word that you had when you were you were walking with him when you first started and, and you were pursuing him on a daily basis, just fellowshipping with him with his word. Think about that today. You know, his word is what it's all about. We just need to stay close to his word. Amen. Amen. So we're supposed to live by faith. Hebrews 11, 6 says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. You know, without faith, we're not even going to please the father. We got to have faith on a daily basis. Praise the Lord for he that cometh to him must believe that he is. And we've said this before, man, many of the messages I've talked about, but it's not just saying he's God. It's saying he is your everything, right? He's your source for everything. Your source of peace, your source of joy, your source for your, your provider for everything that you need in your life, right? That you must believe that he's your everything, you know, like Abraham believed that he was his everything. You know, he's willing to offer his son Isaac on top of the mountain because he was, he believed, he believed God was his source for everything. He knew he, even God gave him some insight telling him he'd raise his son from the dead if he needed to, <laughs> but he was his source for everything, you know, and he, and they were going up the mountain and he told his son, he said, God will provide. Think about that today. He told his son, his son was like, where's the offering? He said to his son, he said, God will provide. And maybe today you're kind of wondering, well, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. Well, God will provide. You may not know how, but he will. He'll provide. He's a good father and he will provide. Maybe today you don't have enough of him in your life. He will provide more of him in your life if you need it right now. He'll give you what, the grace that you need to come through the situation, the strength that you need to have through the situation. He will provide. And you probably ought to say that out of your mouth right now. You've been saying all this other stuff. It'd be good to say, he will provide for me right now. That'd be good to say to yourself right now, wouldn't it? He will provide for me right now. He's bringing me through right now. God will provide. Isn't that good? It doesn't feel good to your spirit when you say that. He is providing for me. He's a good God, right? And he's providing 
for you. So we're supposed to walk by faith. We're supposed to believe that he is and he's our everything. But this is also true here in the scripture. It says that he is our rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know, that's a good father. Think about that today. You know, you diligently seek him and he he rewards you for doing that. You know, that's part of showing love. And, you know, you know, my son, if he does something good, we like to reward him, you know, gets good grades. We like to reward him, you know, and, you know, you think about the father, he's saying to you today, you know, you seek him, he's going to reward you. He's going to make your life better. The more you seek him, the more you spend time with him, he's going to reward you and make your life better. You know, you say, well, how's that? Well, he knows everything about you. He knows what you enjoy the most, right? He's your creator and he knows what you like to have more than anything. You know, he's not going to send you, you know, my, I remember my mother, you know, during my birthday, she would always get me clothes. I hated clothes, you know, <laughs> for my birthday. I hated clothes, you know, don't get me clothes on my birthday. Give me something cool. Something I like to play with, you know, something I enjoy, you know, I'd say, I don't want clothes, you know, she'd say, what do you want? Not clothes. <laughs> You know, but you know, God's that way. He's not just going to give you something you don't want. He's a good father and he's going to give you stuff that you enjoy. If you let him have, give you the things that you like in your life, seek him and believe he's a rewarder. He's going to bless you. He's just going to make your life better and better. The more you spend time with him. Is that not what the scripture says that we're supposed to believe he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. He's a God that rewards right? He's not one of these gods that's dead and they can't give you a reward. <laughs> no, he can do it more than a million ways. And he's already got a reward for you just waiting. If you just seek after him and spend time with him, something better than you can dream of. He's a good God. And I'm really quoting you scripture. He says, every good and perfect gift comes from above, right? I'm just quoting you scripture. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. And, you know, he knows the every perfect gift you need to have. He knows exactly what you like, and he'll get that and make sure it's in your path, praise the Lord, right? So we've been talking about releasing your faith, right? It's what we've been talking about in this last message there in message seven. In message eight, we're going to talk more. Or we, we were talking about releasing your faith. In the message eight here, we're going to be talking more about releasing your faith today. We talked about primarily it was with your words is what we talked about uh, last week. And we're going to talk a little bit more about releasing your faith today, but not just with your words. You know, there's lots of different ways you can release your faith. And not just with your words, but words are primary, prim, the primary way that God likes you to release your faith. And we're going to talk more about how to release your faith today. James, let's go to the second chapter real quick. James 2, we're going to look at for the 14th verse. I thought I was drinking water and I just drank 7-Up. It's good. <laughs> I like that seven up. That's some good stuff. Well, we're going to go ahead and get in this James, the second chapter, the 14th verse. It says, what doth it profit my brother? though a man say he hath faith and have not works, he can can faith save him. Now, this is a powerful statement. We talked about this last week. You know, you can be, you can believe Jesus is Lord. You can believe he's the answer to your everything. But unless you confess it out of your mouth and speak it out of your mouth, releasing your faith by words, then you aren't saved today, right? You don't become born again unless you release your faith. And we said also last week, we talked about there that uh, Billy Graham said he was talking to somebody, I believe they were really well known. And he was talking to him about uh, the person came to him. He says, why do you say all the time, Billy Graham, that I must be born again? And Billy Graham, he spoke to him. He said, because you must be born again, right? And there's no other way to get, get to heaven. You've got to be born again, right? And through Jesus Christ is how you've got to be born again. And Billy Graham was saying, you must be born again. If you don't know who Billy Graham is, he's a well, well-known evangelist, you know, ministered to many, many people. And he, he explained how you must get saved. And that was his primary message was salvation, you know, preaching salvation, and he told him, you must be born again. Is that not what Jesus told the Nicodemus? He said, you must be born again, right? He didn't say you just be saved by just be doing good works. You know, and Nicodemus was a good man, right? He was a, he was a well-known man there. He was a well-known man for being religious, <laughs> right? 
So he had a heart for God and he wanted to do good things. And he's asking God how, how you, you know, how do you get into the kingdom? Basically, you know, and paraphrase a little bit there, but he said to Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again. You have to be saved. So it's not good enough just to say, well, Jesus is the answer. He is the Lord. No, you've got to say it out of your mouth. Jesus is Lord, right? And you got to confess and you got to believe that God's risen from the dead is what you got to do. And you'll be born again. You got to be born again to be able to enter into the kingdom of God. You say, well, why is that important? Well, we want to go to heaven, right? We want to live this life, the best life that we can live. And if you're born again, God can do some wonderful things for you. He comes into your spirit and he lives in your life and he spends more time with you to help you. There's so much more advantage to being born again, being saved, praise the Lord, by Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. So we said that if you want that, you have to... You have to release your words. You got to you got to act on it, and so that's what James is talking about here. Let's look at the seventeenth verse. He says, "For so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone." You know this is so important, and we're just going to spend some time here because it's really important. You know, you can know that you're supposed to love your neighbor, but if you don't release your faith and love your neighbor, then your faith is dead, right? If you know that your your Lord's telling you to go minister to someone specifically and just encourage them, then your faith is dead if you don't do it, right? That's how your faith is alive, by releasing your faith, right? It's dead if you don't release your faith, you know? I don't know how many times, you know, in this walk and journey that, you know, God's had me minister to somebody or do something, and I've some every once in a while I miss it. I'm not perfect, you know, and I and I feel bad, you know, on the inside because I miss something, you know. That's because faith is dead unless you release your release your faith, right? You have to release it by doing it. You got to have an action, right? We have to have an action, We're showing love, walking in love, and being a blessing to others, you know, loving them as we love ourselves is how we release our faith and love, you know. Maybe today he's talking to you about healing. You can know you need to be healed. You can know God wants to heal you. But if you don't release your faith in the area of healing by confessing God's word or doing what he's leading you to do, then you're not going to get your healing, right? And there's lots of things he'll lead you to do when it comes to healing. Sometimes he might lead you to eat right. Sometimes he might lead you to exercise. He might lead you to go and let a person lay hands on you. You know, what is he leading you to do? You know, but we start with our words or say, I am the healed of the Lord. That's where we start. Right. But he might lead you in a few other areas. And so it's, it's important. We never override the Holy spirit, right. In our lives, we never override the Holy spirit, you know, and sometimes he's going different ways, you know, cause he knows what we need more than we need. And we know what we need and we need to listen to the Holy spirit. You know, we can't say it's just one way. We have to listen to the leading of the Holy spirit and everything that we do, praise the Lord. Let's go to the 20th verse. He says, but wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? He says, and by the way, the scripture says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. How do we know that you're a son of God? Well, you're a person that's led by the Spirit of God in your life, right? You're being led by his Spirit in every area of your life. If he says, forgive somebody, you act on your faith and you forgive somebody, right? Because we know that we're supposed to forgive by God's word. We know our prayer is not even answered if we don't forgive, right? And if he's leading you that way, we don't override him. We do what he's telling us to do and we act on that thing that he's telling us to do. You know, you say, well, Jeremiah, that's not easy. Well, yeah, he's going to give you the grace. He's going to give you the power to do it. But you want to be led by the Holy Spirit in every area of your life. So the 20th verse, it says here, but wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? You know, you think about that in your life. When you talk about your destiny and the purpose God's given you. It's dead if you don't do what God's leading you to do, right? And I can think about so many times I can tell you about this, you know. But I remember, you know, when I got saved, I just was quickly to start doing what he's leading me to do, you know. I just wanted to start wherever he told me to start, you know. And I've told these stories many times, but, you know, I, I'll retell them just because I feel the Holy Spirit's telling me to tell these stories. But I'll never forget, you know, when I first rededicated my life to the Lord, I, want, I started to play in the Christian music, you know. That was where I was at, you know. I wasn't ready to teach the Word, wasn't ready to do anything, but I did play music, you know. I'd played many bands before that, and the Lord had dealt with me to play Christian music, you know. So I went in and I gave him all my, my uh, audio tapes to this pawn shop, you know, 
getting rid of all these audio tapes, you know, you say, well, you probably should have burned them. Well, that's the way I felt that I took them in there and I got the, it got me a acoustic guitar and I put a big old Jesus sticker across the acoustic guitar. You know, I wanted to have a bold statement about what I stood for. And I put this big old Jesus sticker across my guitar, you know, and then I, I just started writing songs and I ended up being in a Christian band. I remember I went to a church. And when I went into the church, I'll never forget, you know, I, there were two gentlemen up there. I went to one of them I knew from high school, you know, I didn't know him real well, you know, but I knew him from high school and I never forget. I got there and I told him what had happened, the conversion I had, you know, I think he was a little like reluctant to know for sure. Cause I was a party animal in high school and he's a little reluctant, I think to say, well, Hey, I want to be with him, you know, but he realized after time I had, I had admitted my life to the Lord, you know? And man, we had a bold Christian band we called Tears of Joy, you know, and, and we went out there, we ministered to people through that Christian band, you know, and ministered to them. Well, you know, I started out, I was playing in a, a coffee house by myself. And then the Lord led me to another coffee house and it was owned by another gentleman, you know, and actually the, my friend in the band knew this gentleman from church and he wanted us to come there and start playing. And when we started playing, you know, and this is just the way I was being led, you know, and then when we started playing, there was nobody in there. <laughs> it's amazing. How many times God will have you start something and there's nothing going on. I've had this, I don't know how many times, you know, but it, it, it just seemed like nothing was happening, but the Lord just wanted me to use some faith, you know, get out there. So we were playing and it's important to be faithful. Even if there's nobody there, you know, this is a word for somebody, even if somebody's not showed up or someone's not there, if he told you to do something, it's important to be faithful to whatever it is, even if nobody's showing up, you know, because God knows what's going to happen with it. He knows that he's, he's trying to see if you're going to trust him and he's trying to see if you're going to believe him for the things that he's wanting you to do in your life. So anyway, we were, we went and uh, we were playing this coffee house and, and God gave me an idea about these flyers as in a prayer group, you know, and we print up these flyers and we thought, well, Hey, we're going to send these to all the churches, you know, the nights that we came in and played, you know, let them know there's some great Christian place you could go to. Uh, the young people could go to and spend time doing some stuff and, and a good, healthy environment for them, you know, that keeps them out of the bars and keeps them out of doing stuff they shouldn't do. Get in a good Christian environment, you know? So we sent these flyers. Well, we prayed, we took them to this prayer group. They laid hands on these flyers and prayed for, you know, the Lord bring people in, had people lay hands on the big old stack of flyers. And we sent them to all the churches in the area. And man, you talk about a packed house, you know, <laughs> I mean, we had lots of people show up. I was a little nervous. I got there playing the band. I'd play with my eyes closed, you know, cause the lights were bright in there, you know, and I'm a minister now I'm playing and man, they're hearing some strong Jesus content throughout the music that I was playing. Cause I was very bold with the music I was playing, you know, for the Lord, you know, I wanted to do what God wanted me to do. And I wanted to minister to somebody, you know, you know, and you think about that, you know, that little faith adventure was my first, one of my first adventures, but you know, I ended up meeting my wife through that, uh, that, that adventure, right. And ended up uh, leading me to go do greater adventures you know, because I was faithful where I was starting. You know, God wants you to be faithful wherever it is that you're starting today. You know, whatever he's called you to do, you got to be faithful in it, you know, and trust him and be and do it for the Lord. Do the best of your ability for him so he can do some wonderful things for you. You know, acting on your faith, though, on a daily basis, acting on your faith. What are you doing to act on your faith today? What kind of project is he given to you? Do you play music? Do you write books? You know, behind me, I have a, a poetry book. If you see it back here on video. There's a poetry book. He actually passed away. He was a good friend of mine. I actually went to Ramah with this gentleman. His name is uh, E.J. Burt. And uh, in this book here, if you can see it on camera here, it's called Poetry from the Father's Heart. Okay, it's a powerful, powerful little book here. And uh, it's interesting because he would get inspired by the Holy Spirit. He was actually in this coffee house that I was at. And uh, he would get inspired by the Holy Spirit and he'd write poems, right? Where, where would those poems be if he didn't take the time and step out and write these books? We wouldn't have those today, right? Think about that today, you know. you got to step out in faith, you know, so God can do, get those things to people and be a blessing. He capitalized, he capitalized, I'm trying to say the word, <laughs> he kept, he made sure that we had it for today, right? And he stepped out in faith to make sure that we'd have it today. So it still ministers to people, even though he's not here, it still ministers to people. Today, what are you doing for the Lord that he's wanting you to do to be faithful with today? Praise the Lord. Let me put this back here. What are you doing for the Lord today 
oh, it fell. That's okay. We'll get it later. Then. <laughs> but what, what are you doing for the Lord to make sure that you hand it off to the next generation today? You know, the Lord told me when I first started doing podcasts, which I used to do this all the time when I was pastoring, to record, make sure I'm recording stuff, you know. And it was amazing, you know, I'd give out audio tapes and things like that when I was pastoring. But, you know, how many of those audio tapes ministered to other people was able to be a blessing to someone else? And he told me when I was doing my podcast, make sure you're recording everything and videotaping everything, you know, uh, so that you can have them for what you need in the future. You know, you'll be surprised how much you'll even need those things in the future. I do music that way, too. I record it so that I have it, you know, so, so I can give it to somebody that I need to give it to. It's important that we're acting on our faith, right? And he told me to do those things, not just me. He told me to do those things. What's he telling you today? Let me get a drink here. How are you acting on acting on your faith today? Right? You know, because if you're not acting on your faith, it's dead. Think about that today. It's not able to help nobody. It's not able to be a blessing to somebody if you're not acting on your faith today. Praise the Lord. So we know James tells us now we've looked here at the 20th verse. You go on down to the 26th verse. It says it like this. It says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Now, how many times did he say that in just these, this one little chapter here, 14 through 26 in the second chapter of James? He said it three times, right? He must have thought this was pretty important, right? He must have thought this is pretty important to your life that you're acting on your faith. Well, you, how do I know that you have faith by you acting on your faith? How does God know that you have faith by you acting on your faith, right? It tells him a whole lot about you. You know, he can trust you. I believe that about Abraham, you know, he believed that he, I believe he believed he could do anything for him. He was going to do it and he was going to be obedient. He just grabbed his son the next morning. The Bible says he got up the next morning and took his son up to the mountain to offer him as a sacrifice. You think about that today. Whatever God asked him, man, he was on it, <laughs> right? He wanted to make sure it got done. Are you that way about what God asks you to do? Are you on it when he tells you to do it? You know, maybe today you're saying, I, I need to forgive somebody. Do you do it right away? Or you just wait four weeks to do that? You know, no, God wants you to forgive now, right? And he may be trying to get a blessing into your life. And if you can't forgive, he can't answer your prayer. Think about that today, you know? In your life, you're holding it up because you won't forgive today, you know, and you might be surprised how much some of your situations that you're dealing with right now, just because you won't forgive. And it may even be God, you won't forgive. And some of your situations aren't getting better because you don't forgive. That's your pride is what it is. It's pride. And it causes a fall. The scripture says pride comes before a fall. How does it fall? Well, it falls in your situation because you're not being exalted by being, being humble in your situation. Think about this today. He'll make your situation better, make you rise to the top if you're humble. But if you're prideful, he's going to bring it down and all your situations are going to be more of a challenge because of you. It's not because God's making you be that way. You made the choice. And we have to be people that are humble and fall under his hand so he can exalt us and make exalt our situations in our lives. You know, maybe your marriage is having challenges, but you're being just prideful and you're having challenges in your marriage. Well, you know, if you'll be humble, he'll make your marriage wonderful. He'll make it better. Maybe you're being prideful with a friend today, you know, and you're wondering why you're having just a horrible time with your friend. Well, maybe you need to have a little humility and it cause that relationship to get better has a lot to do with your attitude, right? And it's acting on our faith, praise the Lord. He said three times to act by our faith, you know? So I think it's important that we act on our faith. So face on its own does nothing. We must do something. Last week we talked about the number one way was to release it with your words. This week we're talking about how to release it by actions, praise the Lord. And your life, actions, Lots and lots of scripture talking about your actions and how you release your faith, you know, in your life, you know, you know, in my life and your life, how do you release your faith? I can tell you circumstance after circumstances after I left to play in that band, I'll never forget the Lord was leading me to go to Rama, you know, and be married on the way there. I, I felt like it was the time the Lord wanted me to get married and go to Rama. You know, so I'm, we stepped out and got married and went to went to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Boy, I love Tulsa, Oklahoma. If you're in Tulsa, hey, how you doing out there? It's so wonderful. Out That's the land of promise out there in Broken Arrow, <laughs> Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, man, I love it out there. You can go out there and see the Oral Roberts ministry. You can go out there and see Brother Hagen's ministry out there in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Just wonderful, wonderful place and wonderful pastor out there, uh, Brother Hagen Jr. and, and uh, other people out there. Just wonderful, wonderful place to be. 
man, lots of great ministries out there when we were out there, you know, and God will bless his, got his blessings everywhere out there. But I'll never forget, we stepped out in faith, got us a one bedroom apartment, trust in the Lord to be there and everything. And, you know, we didn't know how we we're going to pay for Rama. We didn't know how we were going to do things, but we we're just trusting him, you know, and the more you walk in this faith journey, he gives you more faith and he causes it, he gives you grace to do the stuff that you need to do. You know, some of you just need to trust him. Whatever it is he's telling you to do, you need to step out and let God help you to get to where you need to go. What is it he's talking to you about today? Well, you know, we we stepped out. You know, I'm like, I'm hoping I'm, I've already stepped out. and We got to put the application in, you know, and I'm trusting God with the application, to, you know, and it's pretty detailed application. We put that in. They accept me into Rama, you know, and end up going to Rama, you know, and then we got to trust him every month for, I was 200 and something a month. As I remember, <laughs> we trust him and me and my wife, you know, one bedroom apartment, you know, didn't have the best jobs, but God started giving us better jobs and making things better for us. I remember he gave us one job, you know, I'd left and he gave me a job working with, uh, with the Lord's help of, uh, ministries, which is a powerful statement. I never forget or a powerful time because I remember we were looking at the newspaper, you know, and me and my wife looked at the newspaper, you know, looking for jobs. They don't do that today. You have every kind of way to get a job today, man. You can, go, <laughs> you can get it emailed to you, you know, today, but back then you'd have the newspaper. And I'll never forget, you know, we're looking at the newspaper and I never looked at it like this before. My wife to me, she said, what would you like to do? And I never looked at it that way. I always felt like you just earned your job and you had to just find a way to provide for your family, you know, but I'll never forget her looking at me and saying, what would you like to do? You know, and no, I never thought about that, you know, and we, we started trusting God for something we would like to do. And I ended up doing one of the job I liked the most, you know, and, and probably was my, I remember my father actually worked there after I got there, my father ended up going there and he said it was the best job he ever had in his life. We were actually at this uh, company where we actually helped all different ministries and things like that. And I actually became a prayer minister there and I was going to work to pray with people. <laughs> Amen. And you think about that, you know, God can get you something special, something you'll enjoy if you'll trust him and help let him lead you by his Holy Spirit. He's got wonderful things for you out there, but it has to do with how you see things and how you trust him for certain things and how you act on your faith. You know, you have to step out, go out there and try it. You know, if you have to go to a few jobs till you find the right one, but let the Holy Spirit lead you by acting on your faith. We have to act on our faith. Well, I was there for years, went through Rama, enjoyed it. Wonderful, wonderful time, you know, with the Lord. And then we said, well, we're going to step out and do youth pastoring. You know, we used to left uh, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, had to trust the Lord to go out and do youth pastoring. You know, we went to this uh, church and started becoming youth pastors there. And I'll never forget, you know, we started out, of course, with nobody hardly in our, in our youth pastor group. <laughs> I'll never forget. They set us up in the office and we had like five metal chairs in there with uh, one, two, three, four kids i believe it was four kids now this was a uh, community uh that we were in that we lived in shawnee oklahoma and we started out with just a few kids in there and it just kept growing and growing and getting bigger and bigger but you know you have to be faithful you got to trust the lord where you're at you know whatever god's called you to do you have to be faithful with what he's called you to do and step out in your faith that doesn't have to you know notice that the first scripture we were looking at there we walk by fi faith, but, but not by what we see. And, you know, I remember Kenneth Copeland talking about, you know, that there, when he started their meetings, there wasn't a whole lot of people there, you know, but if he went by what he saw, he wouldn't have these great meetings that he has today. And, you know, in your life, it may not be, seem like something big, but if God told you to do it, he's going to do some wonderful things in your life. If he'll, you'll let him do that in your life, praise the Lord. So we walk by faith not by what we see, but we also step out and we use our faith, whatever he's leading us to do. What's the Holy Spirit telling you today? do today? James 5, let's go over there in the first verse. He said, after there, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there in uh, Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches and these lay a great multitude of impotent folk of blind halt withered waiting for the moving of the water for an angel went down at a certain season to the pool and troubled the water whosoever then first after the trouble of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had right and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years now think about this you know 
he's there at this particular place and he's had this infirmity 38 years. How many of you have been having an issue for 38 years or have been a long time since you've got this situation fixed, you know? You know, maybe you've known you should be saved and you've waited years and years and years of your life and your life could be totally different if you just step in and let Jesus change your life today, you know? Maybe you need healing and you know God wants to heal you, but you just, you'd rather not uh, step out in faith and trust the Lord. Well, this gentleman was in that situation. Listen to what Jesus says to him. He said, when Jesus saw him and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, wilt thou be made whole? Why do you ask him that question? Right? I remember this uh, gentleman talking about, you know, with a marriage, he was canceling marriages and stuff. I'll never forget him talking about how uh, he said he wouldn't counsel somebody if they both said, if they didn't both agree that they wanted to fix their marriage. <laughs> right? And it's kind of what Jesus was doing here. He's like, you know, I don't want to even mess with you. I don't want to take the time with you if you don't want to be healed. Right? You know, and he, is he that way a lot of times with people today? You know, he, thank goodness he's not he's grace and loving but has he asked you today do you want to have a better situation do you want me to fix the situation is he always checking in with you and you're just not willing to work with him you know god wants your situation to be better he's a good god and he wants to fix your situation and make it better for you but you got to be willing to do some things you've got to be willing to step out and trust the lord in your circumstances if you want your situation to get better it all comes from actions and we have to be willing to act in the right ways, too, by the way that the Holy Spirit's leading us at the time. And so it's important that we have actions with our faith, praise the Lord. So he said to him, wilt thou be made whole? Think about that today, you know. And he prayed for this gentleman. He took up his mat. He, well, I actually didn't pray for him. He told him to just take up his mat, and he got healed. He had a miracle right there, got healed at that particular time. Think about that today by stepping out right then when Jesus told him to do it. Now, if he'd waited and Jesus came by, he might not have got the miracle right when he wanted it. But at that time, he did what God was telling him to do. Are you doing it right when he tells you to do it? Or are you sitting there procrastinating all the time and putting it off? You know, we need to do it when he's telling us to do it. And this gentleman got his healing, praise the Lord, because he was willing to do that as soon as he told him to do it, praise the Lord. There was this gentleman, I never forget, Brother Hagin used to talk about, and uh, he'd had every great minister in the world pray for him, you know, from at the time, well-known ministers all over the world prayed for him, but he didn't get his healing. He, he wasn't going to get better, you know, he, he, but because he never acted, you know, and one day he said to himself, I'm going to crawl out to this tree. There was a tree out there where he, he wanted to crawl out to, and uh, he crawled out of his house into this tree. He was very ill. Then he got out there and he said, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to worship you, Lord, until I live or I die. <laughs> Powerful to think about, right? And he went out there and worshiped the Lord, just worshiped the Lord, worshiped the Lord, worshiped the Lord. He said, until he lived or he died. He says, he started going, I thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Until, as I remember, he got his healing. Think about that today, you know? But he had to act. All the people in the world prayed for him. But he had to act on what God was leading him to do, praise the Lord. And we've got to act. We've got to be people that are willing to act. What is he telling you to do? What is he telling you to release your faith to do? Maybe you're needing healing today. What is he releasing, telling you to do? Maybe some of you just need to start moving around right now. He's healing you right now. Maybe he's telling you to do something you didn't do before. Maybe he wants you to plan that vacation, and you don't know how you can do it. But maybe he's telling you to start planning a vacation. <laughs> Amen. What is he leading you to do, right? How does a healed person act? How does a person that God's made them have a better destiny act, right? What is he leading you to do? You know, how does a person that you say, well, I don't have any finances. Well, how does a person that has finances act, you know? What is he leading you to do, you know? I remember a person was talking about how they wanted to go on this vacation. They couldn't they really want to go on this vacation, and they finally created in their house what it was like in the vacation. I think it was like, a, uh, like Hawaii or something. They wanted to go to Hawaii and they put palm trees up in their house and started getting ready, making it feel like they were going to Hawaii, you know, acting on it, you know, maybe just buying the suitcase, you know, maybe you want to take a trip and you've never been able to take a trip. What are you wanting to do? 
you know, trust in the Lord. What's he leading you to do? And trust, and he's leading you to act that way. There's this one person I'll never forget. They were talking about how they wanted a washer. They really needed a washer bad. And God told him, well, you know, if you want a washer, act like you, you're going to have a washer. So they went and started clearing out the area where they wanted to put the washer, <laughs> getting ready for it. Amen. Believing he's going to do what he said he was going to do, right? You know, there's scriptures say, if you agree concerning anything that I shall ask, that you ask in the Lord, he'll do it for you. What do you believe in he's going to do? Are you acting like he's going to do it? Or are you just sit there every day thinking, I hope it comes? No, you got to act and you got to trust him with what you're doing. Praise the Lord. Maybe it's a destiny and he wants you to do something, you know, and I told you about some of the things I did. How does he want you to act? Act on that destiny that he wants you to act on. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Mark, the second chapter, Mark, the second chapter. And this is an interesting story. Let's look at this real quick. It says, and again, he entered in Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as uh, about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. Now think about this, though. He started teaching them first, didn't he? What do we say? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Jesus taught them. And then we see them starting to bring the people that were sick to him to pray for him, right? They were acting on their faith, were they not? The fourth verse, he says, and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof to where he was. And when uh, they had broke, broken it up and let down the bed, let down the bed where in the sick of the palsy lay, when Jesus saw their faith, he said of the sick of the palsy, son, thy sons be forgiven. Does he not like faith? Think about that today. He did, he saw their faith and immediately he was doing stuff. You know, and if you if he sees your faith, you don't think he's going to do some stuff. And you know, if you're showing encouragement to somebody, you'd be amazed how much he's in it. And when you're showing encouragement encouragement to somebody, how the Holy Spirit will come upon you and it'd be an even better experience when you do it. Because you're showing and acting on faith. And God loves faith, right? It says, forgive thee. But there was certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why did this man thus speak blasphemes? Who can forgive sins but God only? Yeah, you know, when you're acting on your faith, of course, there's going to be people that may not agree with you. And they may not like the circumstances. And they're going to give you a hard time. But that doesn't ever stop us. We always act on our faith. The eighth verse is immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reason within themselves, he said unto them, why reason ye these things in your heart? Whether it's easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or say, arise and take up thy bed and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he saith unto the sick of the palsy. I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose. <laughs> Amen. Maybe today he's telling you to rise out of your circumstances. Maybe he's telling you to rise out of that darkness that you're in right now today, and he's going to make it better for you. Maybe he's saying, well, maybe I'm, you're depressed. I, I really feel like there's somebody who's really in a deep depression, and maybe he's saying to you, you need to get up. You know, I was, remember this gentleman, his, uh, his daughter passed away. You know, I'll never forget the story about it. And a gentleman came over to his house, a well-known minister, and he, he was known for having lots of joy. And he came to his house and they had the, uh, the curtains were all shut all around the house, you know, at his home and, uh, shutting all the light out. Cause he was depressed. He lost his daughter. He's depressed. He was mourning and grieving. But after some time, this person came over to his house and what he did is he started opening all the windows, letting the light light into the house, you know, and some of you, you're in that kind of darkness today. You know, you need to let the light in, you know, let the light in so that he can make your circumstances better. Start pushing back the curtains and believing for a better day coming. Praise the Lord. Amen. You got to believe for a better day every day, you know, or you can sit in that darkness and, and, and have a dark life, but you can believe for a better day. If you'll just start opening those curtains and letting the light of the glory of God come into your life, he wants to make it better for you. But you got to do something. Maybe that is today. Maybe physically you may need to go open some curtains. And maybe you need to get outside and do some things so you get out of that deep, dark circumstance that you're in your life. Do some things different, but you've got to trust the Lord so he'll lead you out of that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, so they opened this roof. They dropped him in there. He gets healed. Yeah, I can imagine being that person like, oh, my goodness, you're throwing me through a roof, you know. <laughs> but... 
they were after, they were showing their faith and God rewarded them for showing their faith. Praise the Lord. And maybe today you need to show him your faith today. You know, you say, I don't ever hear God. How come I never hear God? Well, because you never do anything for him, <laughs> right? You get involved with the things he wants you to get involved with. You're going to hear him all the time, but you got to get involved with the things he wants you to get involved with. Praise the Lord. He's not in that junk out there. He's in the stuff that he wants you to be involved with him. Praise the Lord. He'll talk to you a whole lot. When you get involved in the stuff that he wants you to get involved with, praise the Lord. Maybe that was for somebody there today. Hey, Amen. Let's go ahead and pray today. We got quite into this, but I'd like to get into it more, but we'll try to get more into where we were at next week. Praise the Lord. Father, we just thank you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you, Father, for your mercy today, Father. Lord, help us to act on our faith on a daily basis. Help, her to step, help us to step out on a daily basis and do the things God has called us to do. And Father, we just thank you. If there's somebody here today, Father, Lord, that... That's having trouble with that. Help them to know by their Holy Spirit the direction and the guidance and what they should be doing. Amen. Help them to have leadings, leading by you, Father, in that. And, Father, we just thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. And we give you all the praise and all the glory every time in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you don't know Jesus, you need to know him today. Amen. We never want to leave without reaching out to get that harvest you amen. because jesus paid the price for you and he wants you to be in the kingdom of god and have a, a good life with him right so we're going to pray this prayer for salvation if you'd like to know jesus all you have to do is pray this after after me as i'm, I'm basically going to pray right out of romans 10 9 and 10 and i just want you to, to say it out of your mouth release your faith uh, with the with the scripture today and i believe god's gonna make that change in your heart today praise the lord so go ahead and pray with me father i just thank you father for raising jesus from the dead i believe you're risen jesus from the dead and father i confess jesus as lord of my life right now i'm not playing games today jesus i want you to be lord of my life right now in jesus name amen and amen praise the lord praise the lord amen glory to god well if you prayed that prayer I believe he just did a wonderful work in you, and you are saved today. I would write down the time. Let's see what time we got here. Five twelve here Central Time. Yeah, write that down so that you have it written down so you don't forget it. You know, write down the date there. What is today? The uh, 10, 16, uh, 2022. Write that down so you don't forget it. Put it somewhere special where you won't forget it. And every time the Emmy says, well, you didn't get saved. You can say, well, no, I got saved at this time, buddy. <laughs> And I am saved and I'm going forward with the Lord today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, and email me at Jeremiah's ministries at yahoo.com. If you'd like, uh, put, put the information in the comments there. If you like, if you're live there online, or if you're on YouTube, put those info, put, put that information in the comments so that we can see it, uh, because we want to be able to see it, to agree with you and pray for you so that you can enjoy this walk with the lord amen we love to see it we love to, it's a wonderful testimony to us so we get thrilled when we get to see it praise the lord well anyway we love you and uh we'll look i'm gonna take a few minutes here to look into the comments see if we have any comments that he prayed for if we have any questions and uh, we'll take a few minutes for that and uh, we'll be back with you we plan to be back with you next wednesday if you'd like to catch that tuesday meeting go to jeremiah smith ministries.podbean.com check hit the live tab and yeah, well, you can check out that uh, live meeting if you like to. God bless you. We hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful week. If you'd like to contact us for prayer, praise reports, or offerings, go to jeremiahsmithministries.com. Thank you for listening.